A context actions gets a menu items to display when the user performs the device specific context gesture on the cell. The context gesture on the iOS platform is a left swipe. For Android and phone Windows operating system, the context is a press and hold. Good day everyone. I'm Michael, and I'm using a text-to-speech program to have a more clear speech and audio. In this video lesson, you will learn the following. 1. Add context actions to list view. 2. Create command parameter. 3. Create an observable collection. On my last video lesson, we added item tapped and item selected to our list view. Now let's make our list view to the next level. So instead of displaying the image button here for edit and deleting item, we will be using context actions. Let's comment this out. Then go to view cell and add the context actions through a property element. Context actions are created using menu item elements. Tap events for menu items objects are raised by the menu item itself, not the list view. This is different from how tap events are handled for cells, where the list view raises the event rather than the cell. Because the list view is raising the event, its event handler is given key information, like which item was selected or tapped. Let's run the app. We're using an Android emulator, so just press and hold the item from the list. This is the menu item we've added to the action context. And this is a back button. You can press this to ignore any action and go back to your list view. We didn't add any action to this menu item. So let's go back to our XAML file and add some events to it. Let's go to the code behind. For now, we can comment out the code from our tapped and selected item events. Then rename the event. Let's start with edit menu. Now, look at the arguments of this method. Unlike the selected and tapped events, our events args here do not carry any information about the current item. So how do we get a reference to that item? Here we have sender, which is a menu item. Because that's the item that triggers this event. This line casts the sender as a menu item and assigns it to a generic variable name. Now how do we get the information from the menu item into student info? This menu item has a property called command parameter. In XAML, we can bind this parameter to our student info object so we can access it here. So back in XAML. Here, I added a command property to each menu item. Now this line means that we want to assign the object to the command parameter. And that object is the student info that is currently selected by the user. We input the period here to tell the program that we want to bind the whole object. Meaning we have all access to its property like name, status, and image URL. But if you prefer to get only the name or status property of the object, you can change the period to the name you intend to bind. But for this lesson, I would like to access all. Let's go back to our code behind and complete the event. Since we bind the command parameter of the menu item to the student info object, we can now cast the menu item to student info and display its value. Let's run the app. 
Let's press and hold. Then tap the menu item. That's how you can access an object from the context menu. Let's go back to our program and add events to the delete menu item. Here I just copy what we did to edit the event. Instead of displaying an alert message, let's delete the item from the list. But first we need to declare our list outside the constructor so we can access it to our event. Since my list is now global, we can now call its properties like remove or add to update our list. Let's run this application and see what happens. The item is still there. So what's happening here? Technically, the item was removed from the memory. But the problem we have. It that our list view is unaware of it. Because we remove an item from the list, it does not fire an event and notify other objects about this removal. To solve this problem, we need to use a special collection type called Observable Collections. It represents a dynamic data collection that provides notifications when items get added, removed, or when the whole list is refreshed. So let's change our list to an Observable Collection. This will create an error since we didn't include the class that defines the object. So again, we can just hover to the object and select the namespace that defines this object. This will add the namespace where collections was defined. Let's also change this. Let's run the app again. Press and hold. Delete. Now, whenever we add or remove an item in an observable collection, it will fire an event, and this will notify the list view element and update the current display. That's all for this video lesson. If you have questions, suggestions, something to add, or you think something is missing or incorrect to the lesson, please let me know. Again, this is Michael, thank you and see you at my next video lesson. Keep safe everyone.